How are thou, everyone? Good, doing good. Any progress on the house in El Jorge, Jid? I was trying to say Georgia in Spanish, it didn't work out. Um, yeah, as far as we know, I mean, it's going well, so I don't see any difficulties. Um, still fighting my insurance company over the flooring and other issues down there, but has, it's not going to interfere in the sale. We're giving her uh, an allowance. She wants to take care of the floors herself, so it's not a work. Good. That is good news. Things working out. Yeah. Good morning, Ms. Charity. How are you? Good morning. I'm How good. is homeschooling going? Um, it starts Monday. <laughs> oh. So well, my, my nephew is here right now because my mom is homeschooling him and she needed some help and she's going to help with stone today so yeah he started school in the living room i'm <laughs> i'm in school in my office <laughs> she's like, why don't we just put him in your office i was like no i was like i don't need to have that kind of censorship on my calls <laughs> yeah it's like a few more days of freedom <laughs> Yeah, I was homeschooling my grandson for a few months there and uh, before summer let out. He's back home now, so she's got a uh, sitter that's a high school girl. She's also homeschooling at home now, too, because of the school system. So she's going to be teaching my grandson, so I'm helping him. So it work out. I like it. Congratulations, Miss Melissa, for getting your listing live. Thank you. You excited? I am scared. Don't be scared. You got plenty of support. <laughs> Even if it's nine o'clock at night. <laughs> you do a lot of work late. I do. Hey, whatever works in your schedule, make it work for you. I'm a night owl. I get restless at nine o'clock at night and go putz around in the garage for a while. It was successful though. I did find, I found a box of cords and wires that I was missing. So it was beneficial. Good morning, Dick Nichols. Good morning, Big Dan. How the hell are you? Oof. I'm wonderful, sir. Good. I'm like finding the extra toy in the Cracker Jack box. Oh, you're, you're the prize. You could say that. Yeah. Well, good morning, everyone. It's always a low run on Wednesdays. Usually we get a lot more than this. I wanted to see how Larry's showings went down in Mexico, but it looks like he's busy in Mexico, so then Sean in. What kind of situations we can help you with today? I don't care if there's one person or a hundred people, we still work to help benefit you. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? No? You guys are good? Just want to sit here and BS? Has anyone worked with um, uh, uh, buying a home in, a, uh, in the Green Valley Retirement Community? Recreation? GVR. Yeah. I've done that. Okay. Okay. Um, I was downloading some documents, you know, their membership information, their deed, type of deed information. So to yeah. speak with the buyer about it. So uh, town home down there. Well, it's actually a very good, I mean, it's a lot of money to become part of that GVVR, but it is a pretty good deal if you if you're active. Now, if you're on your way out, and I mean, if, if, if you're going to be dying soon, you really don't want to do that. You know? Oh, God. But no, I, we have to be transparent. Make sure our clients know that. Ask them, how many years do you think you've got left on this planet? You and do realize these are recordings. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> you do realize these are all being recorded. I know that. I mean, I'm doing this. I, hey, I'm the same whether I'm recorded, videographed, or whatever. I go right to the essential. I'm learning that about you, Dick. <laughs> Dick Nichols is honest. <laughs> Honesty. Other way to be. <laughs> Honestly, Trevor, we talked about were the one of the highest qualities looked for in an agent. So uh, I, I will commend him for for yeah, that. I'll never condemn him for it. If I could share something, the yeah. other day I, I talked about you know uh, the the uh, passion of selling, the passion of being a good realtor, and then I heard someone say that a good realtor is happiest best when they meet when they help their clients uh, get their dreams and all i can think of is that i wanted a lot of happy realtors and you know it's like the like snow white and the seven dwarfs get rid of get rid of grumpy but <laughs> go after happy you know dopey well there's a few dopey ones too but kind of kind of key in upon happy and, and i tell you it's so it, you you will attract more people to your business if you got a happy continence about yourself, and we are all beautiful people, you know, we, we, we are we are, we are the best real estate <laughs> brokerage in all of Southern Arizona. And we got some very, very dynamic people. And you people all have a great heart. I mean, you do. And so look at yourself in the mirror in the morning. There was a movie many years ago called uh, all that jazz. It won the Academy Award. It was about the great Hollywood choreographer named Bob Fosse. And uh, the actor who played the role won the Academy Award for it. I'm trying to think of his name offhand, but it's not important. But Fosse would go out and he'd be out all night long drinking and chasing and doing all sorts of things. He'd get into the get back to his home at three o'clock in the morning. And then at six o'clock in the morning, he'd wake up to get ready for work. And I remember him walking into the bathroom and he would put his hands on the sink. He has to shave himself. And he looks up in the mirror and he just, he just looks terrible. And all of a sudden he goes, it's showtime. And he just picked himself up like that. We have to realize that everything we do can be put on a uh, on a billboard, and we are always in showtime mode because it could be the person at Walmart you run into, and you got your little badge on. You know, if if you don't if you don't project that happy, cheerful confidence and positive and confidence, who in the hell is going to use you? You are absolutely correct. It's it's all about the energy you bring. I don't care if you're the best. At whatever you do, if you come at it with a crap attitude, I don't want to be part of it. Yeah. Don't be a, a, a what are the curmudgeon? Is that what the word curmudgeon? Don't be a curmudgeon. Be careful where you go with that because uh, I'm getting to that age. <laughs> you want to know what the most contagious thing in the world you can give is? The COVID virus. A smile. But nice try, Dick. <laughs> okay. Come here, buddy. No, it's all it's all about coming at it with a better mindset. Good morning, Miss Mara. Good morning, Miss Tess. Hello. What are you, what are you doing? Close, Close the door, please. Oh, he's gonna stay in here then. My mom's dog found my feet and he's laying on top of them. I don't want to want them. I'm afraid of stepping on them, so. What can we help you with? We kind of went around the room already, but Mara and Tess jumped in a little afterwards. Sorry, I was so focused on work that I lost track of the time. Don't apologize. <laughs> for well, my listing that went live yesterday morning, we already got two offers on it. Um, they're listed at 329. So the only concern is the best one is a VA. And even with seller concessions, they're about 3000 over list. So only concern would be appraisal, I guess, which shouldn't be hopefully that big a deal. In Continental Ranch, there are definitely some things more expensive, but 
guys have any thoughts? The other is conventional, but like our prequel, they don't have any docs that they've shown the lender yet. So that throws up a flag, right? So even though they're offering to put like 60,000 down, it says, you know, documents, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, and again, in this climate, why would you submit a prequel like that? We had an agent that actually countered back on just the prequel. That's yeah. what we like to offer. That but... was me. <laughs> <laughs> that was my story from earlier week, which is what I told them. These are the buyers who did that. So I'm like, just like your prequel, this was not complete. What do you want to do? Right. So, anyway. But yeah, she had like 10 showings yesterday. It's like a, it's like a prenuptial. You don't, you don't go into a home sale without having a prenuptial. That's that prequel. And then my next challenge is I met with another uh, seller last night and he wants to sell, but of course the home's not ready. How many of you guys are helping your sellers get their home ready, right? Because <laughs> everyone wants to, you know, if they're thinking they want to sell and, but we've seen a lot of crap going out too. And we've seen, you know, a lot of stuff falling out because of the bins or whatever. So I'm trying to gently say, we want to get the most for your house. Can I recommend a handyman to come in and do these few things? Because it's really not that much. It's just he doesn't have time to do it. So I'm trying to gently encourage to please get these things fixed. I know you don't want to do anything, but <laughs> you're going to get so much more money if you just spend a couple hundred dollars getting these things done. Are, are you going to suggest that they do a um, uh, like a pre-home inspection? For the seller no, side? No, because he's done a bunch of these upgrades himself. So he's a handy kind of dude. And he actually refused to do a home inspection on this house. Uh, we got under contract on a different one. This was like three years ago. And he paid for the inspection on that one and backed out. And so on the second one, he's like, no, I'm not paying for this. <laughs> I'm just going to buy this thing. <laughs> so he's kind of one of those handy do it. You know, he redid the flooring, the kitchen. So he's kind of handy, I guess, you know. Yeah. And it's a low end, you know, it's not that expensive, around 200000 So, um, but yeah, on my bigger fancy homes, when I feel like people can afford, I always recommend a pre-inspection. Mm -hmm. It hedges out any of the objections before they even happen. So that's a huge benefit. Yeah, I mean, he went ahead and fixed a ton of stuff on this high-end home, too, and then the people still ask for a ton of stuff. So, obviously, you never, you know, you got to warn your sellers. They're always going to find something, right? I don't understand that. I really don't. The, the market is super hot. They're super aggressive in the pricing, but then they're just beating up the Benzers. I think it's because they feel like they're paying top dollar. They want everything fixed possible, <laughs> you know? Perfect. are being unreasonable like that one guy said somebody asked for eight thousand dollars to remodel their kitchen or something or, anyway like no that's not what the bins are for it's not for a remodel <laughs> I, I will gladly give you the money to remodel your kitchen so i'll give you eight thousand dollars to remodel your kitchen or increase the sales price 12 grand yeah so anyway a little crazy people don't like that at all Well, it's good. You guys seem like you just keep getting everything done, going. It's been pretty busy. I like it. Great you know, what are you doing to find more seller leads? Well, you know how David mentioned, just start talking about buyers not being able to find stuff. So when we're talking to folks, it's like, man, we need more listings. And just mention that to like everybody you talk to. So, right? You know, <laughs> Now's the time to start talking to the vendors and different business people out there because and get to know them because you can get referrals from them. I've got a photo shoot at nine o'clock this morning with uh, Tucson stained glass company and I've used them and she was so excited that I'd come out and spend an hour, maybe a, a, you know, do a one and a half minute video of her and we could, we could have done it by zoom too. And zoom makes it really easy. If you want to do it that way. But you do something nice for somebody and people want to spread the word. And, you know, whether it be your mechanic or uh, your um, computer repair guy, <coughs> your home inspector, but go out to the people that you normally don't do business with. I mean, find little, because a small businesses need as much help as possible. And mm -hmm. right now, anything you can do to help them and you can give them a big, big, you know, put it on the internet, put it on your Facebook site. 
whatever. And they're going to be grateful. And when they run into that person say, you know, I'm thinking about selling my house. Oh, I have the person that you need to talk to. I think it works. And last week after Aaron mentioned on the stats call, you know, new builds are the thing. My other client was out near uh, Saguaro Bloom, so I just stopped in. I mean, I visited before, but I'm like, hey, can I take video of all your model homes? So I did that to make that my virtual open house video that I'm going to post. But anyway, just, you know, since not too many people want you in their home right now, I figured, hey, I will do an open house with the model home. They all always look great. So mm -hmm. another idea and to meet the... Uh, the new build people. Yeah, great. make friends. That, that way when you have clients that just stop by, you can email and say, hey, Miss Mora, just so you know, the Johnsons stopped by. They said that they were working with an agent and had your card. That way they don't try to just scoop it. They really do work in your best interest also. The new builds, the site sales agents, they get paid on either side, so they definitely want to make sure that the house gets sold and if they can help an agent, which is going to drive more traffic their way, they're definitely going to do it. So make those friends for sure. So he gave me all their price sheets, but said our prices are going up $2,000 tomorrow. <laughs> so I have heard that every time somebody talks to a new build, every time they're like, the prices are going up soon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I recommend spending $30 on buying a karaoke mic that is a, a Bluetooth microphone and putting a little card here and like I have KWSA, the go-to guy network. So when I do a video shoot, I use this microphone really as a prop because 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 the microphone on my camera is much better. But it it makes you stand out and uh, you want people to think you are a professional. Go out there and do it. Have some fun. Be creative. I mean, there, there's so many businesses out there right now that need your help that would be most happy to give you some referrals. Yeah, I call, call upon all those divorce lawyers. Maybe divorces are down and they're, they're sort of in a funk and tell them you'll help them increase the amount of divorces by just advertising. I need, I need to get a better microphone because I was trying to record off my Surface Pro, but the sound quality was terrible. So, Well, if you want a great microphone for Zoom and whatever, a, a webcam, uh, Logitech makes one called the Brio, B-R-I-O. It's what I use right now on my Zooms. Okay. And it's, it's $149. However, if you buy it off of Amazon and you buy the app, you get the Amazon credit card, yeah. they give you a hundred dollar discount but it has ultra high definition it has two microphones so it records in stereo so when i do a green screen here you never i think you'll, you'll notice that when i move around you don't see a lot of fuzziness and whatever mm -hmm. and and it's great to do call up people and do a zoom meeting with them get that little green background behind you and you can put a picture of whatever you want to do and have at it what was that called? Uh, Logitech? Logitech Brio, B-R-I-O. Go to Amazon. Okay. Uh, I, I've had it now for four months. Uh -huh. This is the best webcam I've ever had. The webcam in my laptop is a standard one. This is ultra high definition. So it also shows all the ugliness, as you can see, also. So I mean, uh, but it's really great quality. And the, and the sound is pretty good, I think. Okay. Anybody have a hard time hearing me? No, no. we never have a hard time hearing you, Dick. Oh, oh you're <laughs> such a sweetheart. <laughs> oh. You make me laugh. I appreciate you and Dan. You make me laugh. Well, Dan's my hero. He's my mentor. It's I look up to him. You laugh first thing in the morning. So. You can look up to me because I'm taller than you. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad that we kind of did a little bit of masterminding around how to how to start your day. I, as I talked to an agent yesterday, a little recruiting appointment, and she said that she struggles talking to people she doesn't know, and then went to say well, social media is not that great either, and I really struggle with videos. I know y'all can align with that struggling with the videos. Six months ago, when we started the whole conversation about 
do more videos, every one of you pushed back except for Dick. Now you're all doing a little bit better of them. Uh, I haven't seen a lot from some of you, but that's going to help you out. And Melissa, you have a new listing today. You should go do a Facebook Live video from your business page and walk through your new listing. How uncomfortable did I just make you? Very, very. <laughs> Well, the cool thing is you don't actually have to show yourself. You can just show the house. You can show yourself for a couple seconds and then show the house. It's pretty simple. It's Facebook Live. Hey, guys, it's Melissa Quatch, realtor here in Tucson, Arizona. It's in Colorado, Southern Arizona. And I want to show you my new listing that just went live today. And then you just take your finger and press the camera and turn the other way. And go, go walk into the house. <laughs> and Dan, your recommendation to always shoot horizontal I'm actually changing the way that I think about that only because of how many, how much people are consuming that media through their cell phones now. I, I liked doing horizontal because it looked better on the computer. I'm noticing that there's a lot more people that are doing the vertical. Well, my daughter always recommends it. She was a film and television major. So, you know, I'm going to listen to you and her. That's the best way apparently. Yeah. So I, I, I did that for the same reason because the, you're consuming it in multiple platforms. Horizontal on the phone, it seems to give a better presentation. But there's so many people that'll scroll through a Facebook feed and watch the video with the rest of the screen still being white and not having the video playing correctly. I but don't so like doing that. Yeah, I scroll past those because they're they irritate me. <laughs> I don't even have any videos on my Facebook page. On Bold yesterday, they said yeah, here's stop, one sideways. stop the scroll, something like pose a question and answer it. So that was the bold recommendation yesterday. And think about the questions we might ask, like, hey, hey do you need a new house? <laughs> no, something better than that. But <laughs> and then to send them to your link. And why don't you just say that, Mara? That was a better question. Um, they also said, what are you going to become a black belt in? You know, what's that one thing you're going to focus on? So that was kind of a new way to me, anyway, of asking that question. What, what are you going to become a black belt in, Mara? I wrote down scripts for taking listings. I lost another friggin' listing yesterday and I'm so pissed. I had a presentation all set up and ready to rock and roll and then I was on my way to the listing. I was 10 minutes away from the house. 20 minutes early, so I was, only, I was gonna be there 10 minutes early. It was 20 minutes out of the appointment, 10 minutes from the house. Lady texts me, I'm so sorry about the late text. I just found out my sister signed with somebody else. I was all, oh. So no matter how well you script and prepare, no matter how great of a presentation you have prepared, there's always the human element. I did not know that there was another sister involved. The expectation was sent to me that this sister was helping her mom sell the house and she was flying in from Kansas to do it. So you kind of, so learn from my lesson, always ask who else is involved in the decision making process? That's a good question. Cause I know it came up on that, that buyer lead sheet or whatever as a question yesterday i saw that twice i saw it like twice it highlighted to me yeah there so this it was it was a learning moment i'd like to share with all of you so you don't go through the same experience always especially in those situations she flew into town spent the money on the flight hated flight she even texted me by accident that she hated flying she's like i'm gonna take some pills so i don't recognize the things around me on the flight and she said, oh, I'm sorry, Dan, that was meant to my sister. And at that moment, I should have been like, oh, crap, I should ask if the sister was involved. But her sister let her fly into Tucson, drive to her mom's house, and then tell her, oh, I've already signed with somebody. That's like the kind of thing that my sisters would do, and that's why we don't talk right now. So. Ditto, ditto, Tess. <laughs> Well, and they were trying this kind of stuff. I was, I'm the 
personal representative for my parents' estate. Mm. And my sisters were just doing things willy nilly. And I'm like, you cannot be doing this. Yeah, yeah they're really with as being realtors, I tell you. Yeah. yeah. Can I share a couple of questions they mentioned? Let's do it. Facebook ads. So it said, um, stop the scroll, state the problem, answer the problem. So it said things like looking for a home like this and have a picture for more info, click here. Um, your, your home may be more worth more than you think and then have them click. Are you having trouble paying your mortgage? So that's one that's definitely might be coming up soon. <laughs> and again, click here for more info. So anyway, it was just kind of interesting. They were, you know, throwing a little bit of social media in there. So you would do that like on your Twitter or? Well, this one was for Facebook. They said the average American spends 53 minutes a day, but usually in three to seven minute segments. Okay. So that's why we got to keep stuff short. Obviously people's attention span is short. And then some other good advice they shared was um, like the decision making continuum, how people, you know, when you say no, sometimes it's not really a no. And, you know, Dan's taught us this to overcome those objections and to just, and their point was not to get, um, don't be attached to the decision. So just keep asking those questions to try to unearth, you know, like the true motivation. Um, and they said, selling is not verbal warfare. <laughs> so not to beat people up, obviously, but to unearth. They said, motivated and energized buyers and sellers. Um, but a reluctance to meet even via video would be a warning flag, not necessarily a stop sign. Um, and then they talked, on, we're, talked about using tie downs to get people, again, to agree with you and give you some feedback back. So. There was some good stuff on Bold yesterday. Just thought I might share a few tidbits. Mm -hmm. Great. I, I would like to have been part of Bold. It sounds like they've changed a lot. What, do you, what are your thoughts of it this, this round, Ms. Mara? Um, well, they are making it a little different because um, I just did it in May as well. Um, yeah, I did too. I also uh, asked Emily Erickson to be my accountability partner. So, you know, I think that piece, I had one before it um, wasn't that's good. So anyway, you know, well, a lot of time you can get out of it, but you know, put into it. So, you know, but I think they are trying to make it a little different. Um, and if, if stuff is similar, you know, they've asked us to set these big goals and to do the 60 day, six day challenge. And anyway, but there's some, you, you know, you can always learn something, even if you've heard most of it before. So we're trying to include some command stuff in there as well. That's good. I like it. Some great questions to ask. Um, who's gonna actually go make a Facebook post? Why don't you go make a? Why don't you make a bunch? Go to Canva. Go into the Design Center. Spend two hours and go make eight or nine of them. Nine or ten, whatever. Go into the the social media aspect of campaigns and pre-schedule them to drop out at certain dates. Have them, have them post automatically for you. Let command leverage for you. Spend the time to build them right now. Just get them out there. Use the designs that are in, in command. Customize a little bit and send them out. Well invest in time, time block for it, and then send them out there and then create posts and have them scheduled out there so you don't have to do, what am I going to post today? Or have infrequent posting. Mm -hmm. So. I stole that wording that uh, the Denny guy shared with us, the first base, second base, third base. That's a really easy one to do, guy, like for buyers. First base is to find a great lender. Second base, find a great agent. I hope I'm that person. Third base is find you an awesome house. And that takes, you know, a minute to say and give them your info. And then I text it out to some folks now and say, hey, if you know anybody, please share this with them. And, you know, since it's video, hopefully it's more interesting than a normal text. I like it. Baseball season did just start. That's fine. I'm not exactly a bit. You like an easy metaphor, even if you're not into sports. <laughs> True. You know, if they cancel all the sports like football and college football, there'd be nothing else for anyone to do but watch Builder's uh, social media. <laughs> so make them entertaining. <laughs> Ask them what they think. What do you think of this video? 
give me your truthful answer and put a little survey on a survey monkey or something like that. And you know, when you put, when you post something uh, and someone puts a comment on it, respond to it because you're, you're engaging the people. Yeah. Mara, uh, after, when I was in Bear Canyon with your clients, um, as I was leaving, I know my brother would love to buy over there. And uh, so there was a lady putting her trash out and she waved and seemed nice. So I actually stopped and um, I gave her my business card and just told her I just got through showing, you know, a house down the street and that, you know, I do have other clients interested in the neighborhood. If she knows anyone who would like to maybe sell to, to please, you know, remember me and give me a call. So she was really receptive and said, sure, you know, doesn't know anyone offhand, but cool. I've never done that before. That's great. That's great. And the more we're out there, like I was previewing a house up in um, Oro Valley and a couple just drove up beside it. And I was like, hey, you want to see this house? And she ended up being a client. I sold her a house just out previewing homes and they were just driving around. So yeah. somebody else gave me a bad phone number from an open house. I called it and the guy's like, oh, no, that's not me. And I just kept talking to him. I'm like, oh, well, what do you do? And he had assisted living house. I think I told you guys. And I've been kept in touch. And I'm like, hey, I'd love to, you know, help one of your future clients when they do. He's like, yeah, that's awesome. You know, I mean, some people are just really receptive and some aren't, so. So there's no such thing as a wrong number. Exactly, talk to everybody, anywhere. Ask them if they ever believed in the word serendipity, because this is a serendipitous moment. For some reason, fate brought us together. There must be a reason for that. I wish I could think off the cuff like you guys do. Oh my gosh. Well, and the follow-up is key, right? I had to keep in touch with this lady for like a year. She was in California. She was just visiting her sister, but I kept in touch, kept in touch, sold her house. So. Well, you know, there, there are two types of follow-up. There's follow, F-O-L-L-O-W, there's F-O-U-L. And if you don't follow, if you don't F-O-L-L-O-W, then you follow because yep. you missed a chance. Wow. That was good. I can't believe I just came up with that. <laughs> job, Dick. Humble, too. Yes, very, very humble. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Charity. Best. Hi, Tess. <laughs> what for Tucson? What's the best sign company? Save on signs. Oh, I mean for listings. For what is it? Save on signs. That's for making signs for us. That's the only. No, um, I don't know. We don't use these in Sierra Vista. I've never used one before. <laughs> They put the signs in the yard. <laughs> oh, I use I use oh. sign down. Renee Juska, is that how you say her name? Um, yep. she when I went to the house that I shadowed her on Saturday, I was actually touching it, going, ooh. <laughs> sign. She says, it's a company that comes out, installs them for you, blah, 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 and removes them afterwards. I don't know who it is though, but Renee is <laughs> Up sign down. Huh? It's up sign down. Yeah. That's so that's plan to do that too. Yeah. So oh, a plan to put them up and take them down. And it's only like, what, $35 or whatever? Yeah, yeah it was real reasonable. So. Okay. I mean, not for somebody like me who doesn't have $35 right now, but it was a reasonable cost. I have some open house signs if anybody wants to buy them from me because. Uh, it has my picture on it though and my name, but you know, <laughs> that might that, that may even be better off for you. I don't know. There ought to be a way to use that. Don't buy from this guy. <laughs> That's okay. I use your signs, I'll use your business. Awesome guys. Well, all partner starts in 25 minutes. Ignite ease. We're doing ignite right afterwards. If you want to join in, we are going over where to find seller listings. Yes.
might be a class you want to join in. David Urbaniak is really good at finding these deals to leave. We're going to talk about that today, right after all partners meeting. So if you want to, 1KWSA, click on the link. You're more than welcome to join the Ignite class. We are discussing how to find listings. Yesterday was awesome. No, Tess, you're awesome. <laughs> Talk to you later, guys. Bye.